Trinamool is in power in the state for last, uh, well, uh, if you consider assembly, it is nine years. If we consider the Panchayat poll of 2008, then it is uh, more than 10 years, you know. So a decade of parties in power. So there will be there will be grievances against the party, a lot of resentment against the party. And so in some form, it is going to come out. Now, since Congress and left is receding, so BJP is kind of taking that space. So that is fundamental reason, anti-incumbency. The second factor, which is, I think Trinamool doesn't have much control over that, which is Trinamool is just not fighting BJP. Trinamool is fighting dozens of, uh, you know, uh, dozens of forces, you know, Hindu right-wing organizations, which Trinamool is unaware, unaware of. They're not sure who they are fighting. Because these organizations, you know, there are a lot of Trinamool cadres in these organizations, in these Hindu right-wing organizations which are there, you know, there are plenty in the state. Like, you know, as you know, Sangh Paribar has many outfits, but it is just not Sangh Paribar. There are organizations outside Sangh Paribar which are uh, working in the state and working for a very long, long time. You know, if we if we look at Trinamool Congress, I mean, Trinamool Congress has kind of uh, decimated the left in certain pockets. It has attacked, if you remember, after 2011, when it came to power, it has torched, set on fire the offices of, uh, you know, left front and the Congress attacked many of them. They didn't allow them to hold meetings. Even in the last Panchayat election, we have seen that they have not allowed in many pockets, they have not allowed the, uh, let the, these people file the nomination. So, uh, the opposition in the form of CPIM and the Congress has been decimated. Now, this has been very dangerous for CPIM because that vacant space which has been created has been taken up by the Hindu right, as in the sense a section of the CPIM and a section of the Congress. Perhaps the Hindus of the CPIM and the Congress have moved in, in some pockets. They have moved to uh, BJP. Now, when that has happened, there is a clear polarization. And on the communal line, there is a polarization. The Muslims move towards Trinamool Congress and the Hindus move towards uh, from other parties towards BJP. I am not saying it has happened flatly across the across the state, but it has definitely happened in certain areas. As you as we know, Trinamool and BJP, if we look at it, Trinamool has uh, a leader in the form of, as in the sense, uh, Mamta Banerjee, but they don't have a middle management, whereas BJP doesn't have a leader, a face, but they have a good, uh, reasonably good middle management. So uh, here, uh, you know, what is uh, what is happening is there is, since there is no middle management, so between Mamta Banerjee and the people, there is this, you know, these people act as a link, the middle management. But since there's a lack of middle management, so what she is doing or how, what Trinamool is planning or thinking is not reaching the people, which is which is a problem. Uh, there is a polarization uh, and I'm not sure it is it is uh, going against Trinamool all the time. It is also helping Trinamool, you know, at times. So I'm not saying it is they are all consciously polarizing um, the people, but uh, there are elements of polarization in certain pockets, which is helping them. And there are other smaller, smaller factors, but I think that is what they have, uh, they have largely, and, and they have a connect with the people, at least Mamta Banerjee still has a connect with the people. We see large number of people are going to her programs. And um, she has played the card, as we know earlier, the identity politics card, you know, in the state, which has worked as of now. Uh, let's see if it works in this election. You can divide West Bengal in three parts. Let's say the extreme North Bengal, then Central Bengal, which is Malda and Mushidabad. And then uh, you have uh, the South Bengal. So the majority of the seats are in South Bengal. Let's say 30% of the seats are in North and Central Bengal. And 70% of the seats are in the South Bengal. In the North Bengal and in extreme, uh, I mean extreme North Bengal and Central Bengal, uh, there is a rise of BJP. We have always seen in Bengal politics that there is always in North Bengal, uh, there is always uh, a, a bigger anti-establishment vote in North Bengal compared to South Bengal. 
And the reason perhaps is this, that Calcutta is in South Bengal. So, you know, uh, the headquarters are in South Bengal. So everything can be delivered quickly to, to these areas in South Bengal. The relationship between, the, I mean, the government control over South Bengal is easier and, and, and more, you know. The connection between the government and the people is more in South Bengal, naturally because all the parties are headquartered in South Bengal. So, and, and, and you know, mobility is higher in the sense you have a, a better communication. Uh, South Beng uh, North Bengal is, has got hills and, uh, uh, you know, it's in the foothills of uh, Himalayas. So communication is always difficult. So South Bengal communication is easier. So there are multiple factors why why uh, it is always said that North Bengal uh, does not get as much as South Bengal gets. That has been a perennial complaint of the people who live in North Bengal. So North Bengal naturally votes against the ruling party in the state more often, or let's say, uh, let's say uh, uh, in a more consolidated manner than it is in South Bengal, you know. So, uh, so North Bengal in this case also is voting for the BJP, as we have seen in the previous elections, particularly Panchayat elections. And now we see there is a clear rise of the BJP in the North Bengal. BJP's fundamental problem, uh, if we look at it, I mean, I think, um, as I said, the BJP has a middle management, but you need a leader in India. In Indian politics, you need a, some, somebody, people look for, for a strong leader, and especially for over the last five years, uh, seven, eight years, people are looking, and that was the complaint against Manmohan Singh that he was a weak leader when Congress was in power. So there is a rise of BJP and rise of Narendra Modi, who is considered a, uh, considered a strong leader. So also Mamata Banerjee considered a very strong leader. So you will find that in states, after states in India, that where there is a leader, that party is doing well where where they find a leader. So there is, and it is just not in India, but across the world, people are looking for strong leaders. There are certain point in time in history when it happens. They don't look for a collective leadership, but they look for one particular person. In this case, they're also looking for a particular person. We can debate, of course, whether it is good or bad. But the fact remains that there is an element of people are looking for someone who can lead the party. BJP as yet doesn't have anyone in the state who could be like that. There is Dilip Ghosh, who is a state president. I would say he is not bad. In the sense, he has managed. BJP also have many factions. There have been many problems within BJP. But Dilip Ghosh has managed to keep the flock together. But what he lacks, I think, is, you know, when you come to the real politics, you have to really know who are the people. You know, in every, every village and every block in India, there are one or two or three persons who actually actually drive the politics of that area. Particularly during elections, they are the driving factors. So you know that in this village, there are, let's say 10,000 votes, or let's say, let's say 5,000 votes, and there are three persons who control about 4,000 of those 5,000 votes. So you know, know those three persons. So you know one of them is a CPIM guy who is not very active, one is a Trinamu guy, and the other guy is not very sure. So you pick up or you target that third guy. Now, as far as BJP leadership, the traditional BJP leadership in the state is concerned, they don't know who are these people in particular block or particular village or particular panchayat to conduct the election at the booth level, you know, at the, at the polling station level. I mean, who and, and at the village level, how, how to conduct the election and who are the people to approach. So also they hired this uh, Mukul Roy. They have got Mukul Roy from TMC. And Mukul Roy proved to be a very important factor in this election. I don't know whether he will be able to deliver, but he has given initial very big shocks to TMC. Many of their leaders have left. So also there is a problem within BJP. The old timers are saying, you know, we are getting sidelined. And this, the BJP management has to see through how they how they kind of, you know, put both the new and the old together. At this point, Mukul Roy is playing a very key factor. And I guess he has a good understanding with uh, Dilip Ghosh, but there are contrad contradictory reports about that. They also have, you know, inner tussles. I mean, their groups have also inner tussles. So, um, so that is that is exactly where it stands at this point. BJP has certain pluses and minuses.